Okay, welcome, welcome to um, the November uh, meeting uh, for the Small Acreage Vegetable uh, Crops webinar series. Today's topic is Growing Vegetables in Containers. Uh, special thanks to Tom Leroy. He's a retired uh, master gardener who originally prepared this presentation and helped me uh, present it at various times. I've added uh, some of my information. Uh, Tom is a great gardener. He has a book on kitchen garden. If you search Tom Leroy uh, on Amazon, I'm sure you'll find his book. He's a great gardener. I recommend you uh, uh, look, uh, give it a look. Okay, so what's the uh, appeal of uh, uh, container vegetable gardening? It's excellent for uh, patios, small yards, uh, apartments, uh, any place that uh, you really don't have a lot of space and you have, have been uh, stung by the gardening bug when you were a kid and you just love gardening. It's good, good exercise for the soul. Uh, but at the same time, it requires more care, you know, and I'll show, talk more about watering, uh, but it requires more care. It's not just plant it. Uh, you see these pictures, well, uh, like this pepper there, uh, or uh, sorry, the basil on top. Uh, you see, there's a lot of care that went into that plant, uh, uh, unless you just buy it from the store like that. Container size is important. Uh, if you put a pepper plant or a tomato plant in a one gallon, there is a limit to the size of that plant, even if everything is perfect, water, light, fertilizer, um, no disease, no insects, uh, just that container size will limit the size of the plant. So the smaller the plant, the smaller the pot size, the bigger the plant, uh, the, bigger, the bigger the pot size, if you want to read you know, uh, its full potential. Um, okay. Now, having said that, um, uh, many uh, seed companies are breeding and producing new varieties of uh, vegetables, not just ornamentals, of vegetables that are compact. A dwarf type of plants, like you see in this picture, the cantaloupe and the tomato, um, that they can be suited for uh, the garden for uh, smaller size pots. Uh, the, uh, the you can search um, Johnny's, uh, Bonnie's, um, uh, you know all these uh, companies, um, and then see what they have for sale. Okay. Um, um, so it's the same plant, they're just breeding through normal breeding, no GMO, nothing fancy like that. Uh, they can do it, but if they do it, they know it won't sell. So just normal breeding, they select for those that have short internodes. So the plant has the same number of leaves, same number of everything, it's just much shorter, much compact, just like you see in the tomato here. And, and this past year, in 2017, I uh, did... Uh, great tomato varieties and they were just beautiful you know uh, um, I should have taken pictures and put them here but uh, I'm gonna do it next year and maybe next year I'll show you results of that trial uh, but they were uh, cherry tomato they were aroma type tomato they were large tomatoes but they were just compact no trellising no caging nothing and uh, uh, this list, of course, uh, I'm not going to stop for you long enough to write it all down. Uh, screenshot of the, uh, or, uh, of course, this is being recorded, so you can watch it later. But uh, there are lots of varieties uh, available on the market now. You see here tomatoes, pepper, eggplant, squash, lettuce, onion, beans, radish, um, that are uh, very well suited. Of course, radish and parsley have always been suited for uh, container uh, gardening, but uh, things like um, um, eggplant, squash, pepper, tomato, these are new varieties um, um, you, can, you can search for and, uh, and get them. Okay, so let's start with containers. Any container will work. Mm -hmm. 
can have an old tire and uh, throw it on the ground and fill it with good soil and, and plant in it. Uh, I've seen uh, old toilet uh, um, filled and uh, I mean, a anything. Remember, the container is just a container to hold it. Just see which one works. Size, like I mentioned, the bigger the plant, the bigger the pot. You really, uh, you would be surprised how big the vo uh, root volume on some of the plants. Radish, celery, lettuce have a small relatives, relatively uh, root system. But a tomato plant, it can have uh, roots that are three, four foot long. That's the main tap roots, and not including the branch, uh, the lateral roots. Carrots, of course, uh, uh, you need something that's uh, l longer uh, than the carrot itself. Uh, one time I planted carrots in my uh, raised bed, and the raised bed has about eight inches uh, long, deep of soil, maybe six by the time it compacted, and all the carrots had an L shape because they went all the way down and hit the, uh, the soil, which was hard, and then they went sideways. I should have had pictures. At the time, the cell phones were not very popular, but it would have been very funny pictures to show. Okay, so container, anything that will work. Does it have to be terracotta? Uh, no. Uh, metal, plastic, uh, anything will work. The old idea that terracotta is great, it breathes, it, it breathes air, all this. Uh, that's not um, uh, true in my opinion. Just make sure uh, that you drill holes at the bottom. Uh, and uh, some people still are old-fashioned. They put some gravel at the bottom uh, for drainage. Uh, that is fine. Um, if you're gonna think of using native soil or mix of native soil with potting mix. But if you think you're gonna fill it with uh, potting media, uh, you don't have to put gravel at the bottom of the container. None of the nurseries I know do that. Uh, it's not necessary. Okay, now that's, we talked about the container. Let's talk about the soil uh, or the media. Uh, I uh, definitely recommend you don't use your native soil, even if you have uh, sand, uh, which is great, but you don't know uh, what comes with it that you don't see. You don't see the insect eggs, you don't see the wheat seeds, you don't see the diseases that are there. So uh, if, uh, if you want to uh, win, win this race, uh, you really want to start uh, with the good soil and get a potting media. There are lots of uh, bags, potting mixes, uh, good compost bags available on the market, ready to use, or you can buy peat and, and mix your own. So synthetic soil is what we call basically the, um, uh, those, those potting mix bags that you find on the market. Okay, um, uh, if you do decide to use your uh, native soil, you have nice uh, loamy sand soil, that's great. But uh, remember, uh, uh, don't be surprised if you have diseases. Weeds, weeds are uh, not a problem. You can pull them, take care of them as they come up. Um, it's just that seeds and insects, that's, uh, eggs that you don't see is a big concern of mine. All right. You can mix your own. Uh, you can mix your own. You can buy perlite. Uh, I don't recommend perlite anymore. You can get uh, coarse sand, screen bark, uh, bags of peat moss, Mix them in various ratios, and I have a slide about that. Add some lime, uh, add a slow-release fertilizer, uh, and uh, that should last you. Uh, that, uh, that is a great start. Of course, the slow-release fertilizer is not all the fertilizer you need to add. This is just a slow release. Uh, this way, if uh, between seedings, the plant is continually getting uh, small amounts of fertilizer, um, so uh, slow release is, is not all the fertilizer that you need to use. It's uh, you need with uh, in addition to the regular feeding. Okay, so here's one recipe: a mixture of one part sand, one part uh, peat, and one part bark uh, is great. You don't have bark, fine. One sand, one peat is fine. Uh, pure sand is fine. I've seen people use pure peat, but uh, that gets too expensive, and that's not really 
Uh, it's an A compact after a while, so I don't recommend using peat by itself. Uh, uh, peat and compost, peat and bark, peat and sand. There's really no. Um, um, of course, every company has their own secret mixture. Um, the uh, last weekend, last weekend in Dallas, uh, I visited a big nursery, and their recipe is uh, peat and sand. One pot peat, one pot sand. Of course, their uh, peat uh, comes from Latvia because uh, it has those long fibers of peat. So every company uh, have even uh, not all peat are all the same. Uh, some companies prefer one type more than the other. Um, okay. So what you see in this picture, uh, the white on the left is your perlite. Uh, the middle uh, is the mixture of perlite and peat. The left is the nickelite, and in the front, bottom front, I don't recognize that. I think it's either large uh, perlite or mixture. My guess is mixture of the perlite and vermiculite. That's what I think it is. Uh, perlite and vermiculite and added in peat. So the brown in the center is the final product. Uh, perlite is great, but if you've ever used uh, a potting mist with perlite, after a while you see it all floating to the top. So that's what bothers me, and that's why a lot of nurseries don't even use it anymore. So if you got access to coarse sand, uh, just skip the perlite altogether. Okay. So here are some possible soil mixes. You can use pure sand if you have coarse sand. Um, um, you know, you can solarize it, uh, steam it, whatever, uh, so that you know it's uh, free or buy it that's uh, free of weed seeds and diseases. Um, one part sand, one part perlite or vermiculite, one part sand, one part rice hulls in the Beaumont area or in the rice uh, country. There's lots of rice hulls available, so hey, uh, sand and rice hulls get, will work. Sand and uh, uh, redwood bark will work. Uh, the finer, uh, I mean, uh, shredded those pieces, the better. Uh, pine bark uh, uh, and finally uh, sand and peat moss. When I was in College Station, the uh, potting garden mix that I bought uh, was 50% uh, sand and 50% mushroom compost. So if you are in here in area, with access uh, like uh, like um, uh, Gonzales or Madisonville, if you're in any of those areas, you can get a whole yard of mushroom compost for $10. Um, uh, it's great. Uh, add some sand, uh, add some 50-50, one part sand, one part mushroom compost, uh, and it'll work fine. Uh, it's not magic, uh, better than regular compost. Uh, the mushroom compost has the advantage of having a residual uh, fertilizer in it from the mushroom production. So that's it. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not magic. I do know uh, some uh, gardeners who use uh, pure uh, uh, mushroom compost uh, uh, in their raised beds. Uh, they skip the sand and, and they say it, 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 goes, it works fine. They didn't uh, feel that it had enough salt in it uh, to hurt the plants. Amendments uh, is mulch uh, uh, on the surface uh, for the pots. That's not really necessary. I've never seen anybody um, aggressive on mulching their pots. Um, it's not, uh, uh, but of course you do what you like. Uh, and uh, compost or animal manure. Manure, animal manure is where you want to be careful. You don't want to add too much uh, to. Uh, and if um, and if you can skip it all together, uh, why not? because you don't know, um, you may add too much. People are generous uh, by nature. If they read on the label a teaspoon, they want to put two, they think two is better than one, or uh, they really, uh, so uh, skip that. You may burn your plants if you add too much chicken uh, manure or cow manure. Uh, with uh, cow manure also, there is another risk that it may have come uh, with fields uh, from fields that were sprayed with uh, grazon or other herbicides that are long residual. Uh, the cattle eat the, uh, the straw and hay, and even after composting for two or three years, that herbicide is still there, 
and will burn your will will hurt your tomatoes uh, especially uh, and other vegetables too your beans your squash all that you'll you'll see tomatoes like are uh, like leaves don't open up uh, their button their leaves are warped and twisted in all kind of shapes uh, so that's probably residual injury uh, from your um, uh, from the herbicide okay so stick with um, a slow release fertilizer like osmocot and fertilize regularly with any uh, soluble fertilizer that you have whether organic or inorganic uh, that's probably that's uh, your best bet okay so um, you can mix your own like you see in this uh, picture on the left or you can buy uh, potting soil potting mixes um, uh, ready to use uh, the top one on the upper right it says potting soil plus because it already has a slow release fertilizer built in it uh, feeds up to nine months um, uh, or uh, the one miracle grow the one on the bottom uh, in which potting mix it's potting mix with miracle grow fertilizer uh, plant food put in it okay uh, on our the hypernex uh, the uh, the soil the potting bag in a black uh, plastic bag that's uh, just a uh, um, potting mix okay light and location as much sun as possible this is a general rule uh, of course in texas we are blessed with too much sun so if you uh, your location um, where that you want to use uh, has uh, full sun until about two three o'clock in the afternoon and it's shaded by the house by a tree or something that is fine uh, from morning until about two o'clock that's plenty of that, that meets your uh, six to eight hour requirement uh, rest of the afternoon it does not it does not have to be uh, uh, in the sun all day long to have a successful garden that's my general rule with my experience uh, after years in Michigan and after a uh, few years in Kentucky. Um, we have plenty of fun. Uh, open air with good air circulation, that's not always a good idea uh, so that the foliage will dry out as fast as possible uh, because the humidity or that stays on the foliage uh, will get you diseases. That's why morning sun is very important. You want to dry out the foliage as fast as possible in the morning to reduce your risk of diseases. Can I skip one? No? Okay. So, um, uh, container gardening is fun. It's active. It's, um, you don't need big equipment like a rototiller, big hole, this. You can do it on the balcony, on the patio. Um, uh, and, uh, so it's, 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 a lot, it's a lot of fun and can satisfy your need uh, for gardening even in a small space. Um, uh, I, I've always done container gardening until the last few years and I'll show you why. In terms of fertilizers, uh, as a quick lesson on fertilizer, when we talk about fertilizer, the plant needs uh, primary nutrients that like nitrogen and phosphorus and potassium need secondary nutrients like calcium magnesium and sulfur those two are called macronutrients because the plants need a large amount of them uh, like 15 percent and uh, 2 percent calcium uh, 10 percent potassium something like that micronutrients like the one listed here boron copper iron chloride the plants definitely need them, absolutely, but in very tiny, tiny amounts, something like one part per million, 0.1 parts per million. So if you know that 1% is 10,000 parts per million, you see oh, the difference in the amount uh, that the plant needs between nitrogen and, and, for example, copper. If the plant needs fertilizer, excuse me, if the plant needs a fertilizer that has 15% N, well, remember, 1% N is 15, uh, is 10,000 parts per million, and it needs about 0.1 parts per million of boron. It's like a drop of water in a swimming, in an Olympic swimming pool. 
But if it's not there, the plant will clearly show you uh, symptoms of boron, copper, iron deficiency. Okay? So buy, if you're not sure, buy a complete fertilizer, read the label, make sure it says uh, all that. Um, and, and most fertilizer available nowadays uh, are uh, complete. Uh, they don't just give you NPK, especially those sold in a small volume for the homeowner. Like the one you see here, Miracle Grow, all purpose plant food, Peter's, all purpose plant food. All those uh, are NPK and everything else that the plant needs. Uh, you want to use organic fertilizers, that's fine. Uh, read the label and make sure that it's uh, like Medina, that's fine, they work fine. Remember the plant does not know the difference between organic or uh, inorganic fertilizer. The plants need nitrates, the plant needs the minerals. It does not know the difference, it doesn't care for the difference. It's uh, the, uh, the owner who cares that they want to be organic or chemical fertilizer, and that is fine, as long as you supply enough. Um, uh, I like liquid fertilizers because um, they're, they're instant, they're available, um, they dissolve, because uh, uh, I use an injector. Um, and what, what uh, I don't use today will stay dissolved uh, for next week. Uh, um, you cannot get a granular fertilizer uh, meant to be spread on the soil and then put it in water and expect it to work. So I, I like that it, just for practical reasons because I can dissolve it, uh, dissolve a large amount and know that it's going to be used in the next couple of weeks. Uh, slow release fertilizers usually come in uh, granular, granular or sticks like this. Uh, Osmocote, the one in the middle, uh, I've used it a lot. Uh, of course, uh, um, they, um, there's different brands and different purposes. Like some are for vegetables, some are for uh, ornamentals. Uh, the different NPK uh, varies. If you have more flowers, then they may have more K than if you wanted something for herbs will have uh, something more uniform between NPK. Those are great, and the idea behind slow-release fertilizer is that there's a little bit of fertilizer inside each of these grains, that uh, these beads, and these beads dissolve slowly uh, in the water, and then when they pop up, pop, break open, they release the little bit of fertilizer that's in them. And they don't break uh, open all at the same time, um, I don't know what's the magic, why one opens today, one opens a week later, but uh, that's how it works. Uh, so there's always some opening at a time. Uh, in my citrus tree one day, one time when I had a citrus tree in a pot, I put uh, like almost like an inch of osmocote a thick uh, layer, one inch thick on top of it, because I knew I'm not going to hurt the plants, and I, and I knew that's going to be uh, suitable for a very long time. And even months later, you can still see there it did not, um, I mean, less than an inch, but there was still plenty left. Of course, there are these uh, food spikes or tablets that you can put. Uh, they all work. Just remember, read uh, the, uh, the ingredient and see if it's complete. Uh, read the instructions, how much you use. And most importantly, remember that that is not the only source of fertilizer you need. This is... Uh, what I call like snacking between meals. You know, the plant is snacking on these, but uh, once uh, at various stages of growth, you need uh, liquid fertilizer to give it a shot in the arm to meet, uh, uh, to meet the uh, increasing demand of the fertilizer. Uh, if, you, uh, if you think you need a micronutrient source or you like a type of fertilizer, uh, organic fertilizer that does not come with the micronutrient. There are um, uh, sources of uh, micronutrient alone, like the one here, spray and grow. It's a micronutrient complex. Uh, it can be sprayed directly uh, uh, because whatever the plant absorbs, uh, even if it absorbs 1% of what you sprayed, uh, that is more than enough. Because remember, 1% is 10,000 parts per million. Even if it absorbs 0.1% of what you sprayed, um, that is more than enough to satisfy the need for the micronutrient. 
So this slide shows you a couple of um, types of uh, uh, sources and brands of micronutrients. Okay, watering. The easiest way is the uh, how often to, to know how often to water is to um, use your finger and stick your finger in the pot, in the pot uh, at least a couple of inches deep and see if it feels moist or not. Just looking at the surface is not a good indication. The uh, peat, uh, it can be brown, but still has about 30-40% water. Most people think that it has to be black because uh, when, it wet, when it's wet, um, it, it turns black. It has to be always black uh, to know, and oh, that means it has all the water. No, if it's always black, you have, uh, it's almost saturated. You don't need that stage. Okay, and I would ignore the top ends uh, of that pot because it can be bone dry. It doesn't matter. That's not where all the 90% uh, of the roots are. So stick your finger deep uh, and uh, see if it feels moist or not. You can buy um, soil moisture uh, meters. Um, I found that they're becoming more and more uh, useful and accurate. I bought one for about $20 and uh, you know, it does a good job. Don't buy the toys, what I call toys, for five bucks. They're really a toy. It's like sticking your finger in the oven and trying to guess if it's 350 or 400 degrees. Uh, spend $20, $25. Uh, the, those are better quality toys, more accurate toys, and they can last your lifetime and uh, remove the uh, guessing of when to water. You need good drainage. You don't water... You don't water you don't want water to stand in the pot a long time. Uh, the biggest problem is either uh, for a gardener is overwatering or underwatering problem, uh, meaning um, the plant looks wilted uh, and they immediately think it's dry. Well, no, it could be because it's already too wet. So their first instinct looks wilted, they add more water. No, check the pot. Uh, see if uh, ch ch check the soil, uh, the media. Is, is it uh, dark? Well, then uh, the roots are rotting. That's why the plants are is wilted. Uh, so stop watering. Maybe it's time to throw away that plant and cut your losses early, and uh, um, and don't be an eternal optimist that oh, it'll get better. It'll get better. Throw it away. Plant something else and move on. Uh, and uh, and uh, but as long as you learn from it. Don't repeat the same problem. If you have, uh, and if you are in an area where you have high salts in your water, um, you know, like uh, let's say uh, mid Texas and west Dallas, San Antonio, and then west, uh, where water can be alkaline or or have some salts. Like when I was in College Station, there was some salts in the water. I would leach the pots uh, once a month. What does that mean? You are um, pouring water until it starts draining from the bottom and you can you do that for like five minutes basically you're washing away any salt that have accumulated uh, inside the in it so regular watering you want to water uh, and you don't want any water to come out from the bottom uh, you're wasting uh, water then but once a month then you uh, water you water until a lot of water wash and you can and you keep doing that for five minutes you washed away all the salt that have accumulated Okay, uh, leave one to three inches at the top of the container empty uh, so that if you want water, uh, you know, uh, it can fill up and slowly seep down. It does not have to be full to the rest. Mulch, uh, that always works great. It does reduce uh, water usage, but uh, I really haven't seen a lot of mulch uh, used in containers. That's a personal choice. Um, I don't know if any of you would try to do the upside down tomato. Um, you know, I mean, I didn't have any success. If anybody had success, teach me your uh, secret because I had you no, know, I could not water it enough. Uh, and that's what uh, I'm going to get to um, at the end of this presentation. But tomatoes, of course, are king of the garden. Um, everybody eats tomato. Everybody grows tomatoes. 
um, and that's why there are more and more varieties being suited for uh, bred, for uh, being dwarf or compact uh, to be grown. So tomato as a crop is still number one. Peppers and eggplant uh, are uh, uh, close seconds, uh, whether uh, Japanese eggplant or white eggplant, uh, uh, you know, are uh, peppers. You don't need a lot of pepper plants. Uh, if, uh, one plant that's growing well can, especially if it's a hot pepper, um, uh, can give you uh, your supply for a long time. Of course, depending on how much you eat. Uh, green beans are very well suited for, um, um, you know, because they're, especially the bush type, uh, they reach a stage, uh, they're full of pods, you pull it out, you harvest them, and you throw it away. Those are great. If you like to plant regularly, uh, I recommend you plant a bean or pea early in the spring uh, and then follow a tomato uh, afterwards because uh, the uh, beans and peas, I hope you know by now that they are nitrogen fixing. Uh, they leave a lot of r residue of nitrogen in the soil from the roots. So all that extra nitrogen that you left there from the peas, uh, for example, you planted peas early in the spring, uh, will be available uh, for the tomato afterwards. Don't, fo um, don't follow a tomato after a tomato because they're both heavy feeders uh, and they drain the soil from nutrients unless you fertilize regularly. In general, pots, uh, uh, container gardening is a one-time use of that media. Uh, you don't pull a plant and put another one after it. Um, it's better to uh, harvest the tomato, remove the tomato, throw the media, uh, the soil that's in that pot in the garden. Uh, use it somewhere else. Don't throw it in the garbage. Uh, but for some large plants like your eggplant, your pepper, your tomato, that soil is really exhausted and there may be a risk of soil disease uh, from the tomato or nematode or something. Uh, use it somewhere else. Uh, and refill it. Uh, you want to you want to grow lettuce. You want to grow small plants. Uh, fine. I mean, in general, that's the theory. But in general, even by good container gardeners that I meet, they say, "Oh, I use it uh, for one year. I don't use it." Uh, uh, so once a year, they change the pot size. It's not once a crop. So you decide. See what works for you. Squash and cucumber are also suited for container gardening, whether uh, you put a tree, you have a large pot, you, you build a trellis, or you buy uh, new varieties that are compact. Of course, there is bush type uh, squash varieties already on the market, um, uh, and uh, now they're making uh, cucumbers. M melons, uh, fine. Uh, my opinion on melon is that uh, they're cheap. It's easier, it's, it's cheaper to buy it than to grow it, unless it's a need. It's a definite need to build a trellis and cover the window and and be busy with gardening. Uh, fine. Uh, so, but hey, like you see in the picture on the right here, um, they use a uh, lady's uh, what do you call that uh, stocking to support the weight of the cantaloupe uh, so, uh, uh, on, on the trellis so it does not uh, fall on the ground from its own weight as it matures. Uh, yeah, I've seen people use uh, grocery bags, paper bags, uh, whatever works to support that. This way you can go vertical um, uh, uh, with these crops um, if you have limited space and it looks pretty and looks fine. Of course, salad gardening is always uh, great. Uh, it's quick. Within 30 days, you can harvest uh, what's on the pot here on the left, on the right. Harvest it uh, and or cut it and re uh, let it stand regrow if you cut it uh, shallow and uh, or cut it, pull it out, cut it, clean it, seed something else. Picture on the right, you have pepper in the middle. Uh, and you have surrounded by uh, lettuce, uh, Swiss chard, uh, uh, other crops. So uh, you can pick a few leaves here and there and have instant salad. 
um, and eat. Uh, uh, you don't have to harvest the whole head. You can harvest the outer leaves, um, and the plant will continue growing. So there's lots of ideas, and here's an idea in a big tub full of lettuce, one-time harvest, and plant, plant again. Picture on the right is uh, where they used uh, six-inch PVC pipe cut in the middle, uh, cut in half, and used them, filled them with gravel. And uh, uh, so that is um, in an Asian country, and they have labor and cheap labor, and they can afford, but you, can Im but you don't see irrigation, you don't see sprinkler, so you can imagine uh, that uh, there is daily watering, if not three, four times uh, watering a day, depending on the season, uh, to uh, to uh, keep that shallow uh, layer of gravel moist all the time. And here's that famous toilet paper I told you about, uh, pots, uh, cattle troughs, anything can be grown. Uh, it's, uh, it's fun, anything can be used to grow your vegetables. Um, I was asked one time if, if tires are safe. I've seen them. Uh, I honestly haven't tested the soil uh, to see if there's anything leaking from the uh, so uh, from the rubber tire into the soil and whether the plant's going to absorb it or not. I'll leave it up to you. If, if you're going to worry about it, don't use it. Uh, or if you really have uh, huge tractor tires and you just love to use them, well, just paint them then. Paint them on the inside and out. They look prettier. And then uh, it acts like an insulation. Or put a liner of plastic on the inside and, may, uh, and you know, make holes at the bottom. And uh, they'll be fine. So that's up to you. Herbs, uh, herbs will do fine. Uh, I have grown mint uh, in uh, containers, but it seems uh, after the third year, it was very weak because that old crown, those runners on the soil, um, were getting old. Uh, so it's really mint is better to be rejuvenated every two or three years, um, but you'll have great mint. And if you like, you love mint like me, uh, you can't get enough. The herbs will do uh, are excellent for this because even in a small container you can have mix and match. It looks pretty, um, and uh, they're more forgiving than tomato. Uh, lettuce uh, does not need as much uh, fertilizer, uh, basil uh, as as much as uh, tomato. So even if you travel or you forget or you're a beginning gardener, lettuce, radish, parsley, cilantro, fennel. Swiss chard are more forgiving. Um, you will get a crop, something to harvest and eat and enjoy, uh, instead of a huge tomato with three fruits on it that can be disappointing and then you never garden again. And here's uh, examples of all kinds of uh, containers that you buy, already made, like the one on the upper left or on the bottom right, uh, which is um, made from uh, concrete and they poured and, and uh, so you can make your own, okay? Uh, strawberries is very well suited for container gardening uh, because it's a shallow, a compact, uh, relatively small root system. Uh, and you, it can be productive if you fertilize and water regularly. Okay, most people get excited by a strawberry plant uh, and then they get two or three fruits. Well, first of all, they're buying the wrong variety and they shouldn't be planted in the spring, which is when they are all, always available. That's for Michigan, not for Texas, but all the garden centers buy them and they send them to everywhere. And, and in Texas, you get excited, you buy strawberry in the spring. And it doesn't work. I suggest you plant your spra strawberries right now, uh, and then uh, you'll have a bumper crop uh, uh, next spring, okay, if they are available. If they're not available, see if you have a neighbor or a friend, and you can get a runner, a daughter plant from their runners, and uh, grow it next year. So, okay. The biggest problem uh, is irrigation. So let me show you pictures of my containers that I've had in the past. I've had ficus uh, grown inside um, as a bonsai. Uh, the one you see here on the left uh, was eight, nine years old before it gave up on me. 
Um, I've had pomegranate in containers. I've had uh, blueberries. Um, I had figs. I've had citrus. And you notice all these that I had in container are fruit trees. Uh, I had grapevine. I had blackberry. Uh, it was because at the time I wasn't sure where I was going to plant my garden and I wanted my vegetables in the soil. So uh, I had gardenias. I had all kind of things, ornamental flowers. And finally one day when I uh, decided to plant my vegetable garden and build two raised beds, you see on the, on the right left side of this picture, this is where all my pots ended up. Uh, I said, you know what, forget it. No more pots can, uh, 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 growing in containers. It's just too much headache, too, just too much headache because, because I did not do it properly. I did not set up a drip irrigation system. If you think you can uh, you can do container gardening uh, and water by hand, good luck. Um, some years it may work and some years it will not work and it will always be a struggle. And, and even if it works, trust me, you are not getting the full yield potential. So in this picture, I still had a couple of olives and a fig tree that eventually I got rid of. Um, and... Uh, let me see if I can use a pointer. So here, this ended up being my mint bed. The, this, these two beds, there's two of them. I end up being my vegetable garden, and my pots were retired for eternity. So, if you want to grow in pots, this is you need something like this. You need a drip irrigation system that once you buy it and you set it up. Uh, will be used for life. Um, you put a timer, <laughs> you put a backflow preventer, you put a fertilizer injector, you put uh, everything, and you can travel for months, uh, for a month, and you know your plants are being watered and fertilized. Because, look, you have the container, you have the good soil, you have the drip irrigation that comes with uh, fertilizer. That plant needs everything that it needs. It doesn't need you. You can go on vacation for a week and not uh, worry about. Of course, there's lots of creative ideas, and I've seen all kinds of them. I found this picture, and here's a good website you can go to. Uh, they have all kinds of ideas, and they sell products. I'm not advertising anybody. I'm not supporting anybody. It's just I'm in the education business. Uh, I'm just giving you ideas to follow. You can search online. A container gardening irrigation and you'll find all kind of pictures all kind of reference but I like this idea it's a recycled uh, two liter bottle with holes at the bottom uh, you fill it and the water and the water slowly oozes out from the bottle to the soil as the plant needs it if the soil is saturated the water stays on the bottom uh, it dries up whether it's evaporation or transpiration from the plant uh, some, some more water goes up and when it's empty, you open the cap and you refill it with water and fertilizer. So it's a great idea. Here's another neat idea. Um, I think this is what I would call uh, the concept of Dutch uh, bucket. So you see the bucket and a couple of uh, containers here, a flat and a, a one liter milk bottle with holes in them. This is to elevate the pot. That's the whole purpose of these two. To elevate the pot, this way, whatever water is at the bottom or excess water drains uh, to the bottom. Uh, the pots are not sitting in water. And these two um, uh, bottles cut and put together, that's where the, where the refill is. So the idea is you refill the water and fertilizer here. It fills up. It fills up here at the bottom, let's say two or three inches. The pots sit are, are in touch with the water and they soak up the water as the plants need it. That's the concept of Dutch bucket. Look up Dutch bucket gardening. And uh, it works uh, because depending on the size of the container here, uh, you can go for two or three weeks at a time and not worry about uh, watering because it's a self-watering system. Um, of course, you can go to any garden center. I got this picture online from Lowe's. Other garden center works fine. Again, this is not a commercial for any specific company. 
but you can buy a complete system. And I remember one time going to a garden center and I told them, oh, you know, I would like to set up a, a, a drip irrigation system and I know nothing about gardening. And I was pleasantly surprised that they knew what they were talking about. They told me all the parts, they told me what to use, what they're for, what I needed. Uh, so it's a big advance over the years from years ago when I used to first used to go to garden centers of uh, instead of just being a store with shelves, now they really should provide advice and, and they know the parts that they, they're talking about. So you can buy basically everything that you need and some people nowadays buy kit that will convert your dripper, your uh, sprinkler, sprinkler irrigation system, uh, connect to it. Uh, to have a zone where you can uh, do drip irrigation. Remember, the, uh, the sprinkler system works at a very high pressure, but with the uh, pressure reducer, that uh, pressure reducer that you see here, and the fittings and the pipes, you can use a zone uh, to do drip irrigation. Okay, so in conclusion, if you just if you are not setting up a good irrigation system do not do container carving that's my best advice i can give you